Mendeleev chose to place the noble gases on the left side of the table, not the right side of the table as they are today. So why would he do this? Hey everybody, Professor Davis here from chemsurvival.com, YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And uh, today I wanna ask a question about the periodic table. Let's see if we can get an answer. Is there an element zero? Is there an element even lighter than hydrogen? Now, any student of chemistry today could tell you that there is not. Of course, hydrogen is the most fundamental of all atoms, just a proton and an electron. And clearly we can have no simpler or lighter elements that exist. Uh, however, right around the turn of the 20th century, there was a great debate going on about this. And there is a very obvious evidence of this in Dmitry Mendeleev's 1906 periodic table, which was published about 10 years after the discovery of most of the noble gases. Now, when we take a look at that table, you might notice something interesting. Mendeleev chose to place the noble gases on the left side of the table, not the right side of the table as they are today. So why would he do this? Well, for several reasons. The first of those is, he didn't have any information about atomic structure. The electron had only been discovered about 10 years prior, and the discovery of protons and neutrons were still several decades off. So Mendeleev was searching for a place to put these new elements in his table, and it just made more sense to put them on the left because in those days, tables were arranged based upon valence. Right? From left to right, elements progressively seem to combine with greater and greater proportions of oxygen. So by that definition, it seems like it would be a good place to put these noble gases over on the left-hand side of the table since they don't react with anything, they don't combine with these other elements, and therefore the ratio of those elements in their common compounds is effectively zero. Right? So they belong in the group zero of the periodic table. And another reason that Mendeleev may have been tempted to do this is that it creates a very interesting shift in the table. You see, if we move the noble gases from the right side of the table to the left, in order to preserve the trend in atomic numbers or atomic masses, which is what Mendeleev was using, we have to shift the noble gases not only to the left side, but down by one row. And this creates a tantalizing new block just to the left of hydrogen in the periodic table. So tantalizing, in fact, that Mendeleev, who had had great success at predicting the existence of yet undiscovered elements, chose to predict the existence of an element in this place, to the point where he actually printed in his periodic table a proposed name for this element, coronium. It's also gone by some other names, including uh, newtonium. That's another popular one. So why would anyone think that there might be an element that belongs there in the first place? Well, that's because in 1869, observations of the solar corona during a total solar eclipse produced emission lines of wavelengths that didn't correspond to any known element. And many believed that that was because there was a yet undiscovered element in the solar corona that was creating these lines, and that someone had observed evidence of a new element that was going to need a home on the periodic table. This is why Mendeleev chose to place his element here. So what was that line, right? We now know today that, of course, coronium does not exist. So what were those lines that were seen in the corona? Well, those lines were the emission lines of highly ionized iron and nickel atoms. And those lines could only be produced in laboratories here on Earth for comparison in the mid-1900s. So it took quite some time before anyone was able to offer a competing theory as to what that actual emission from the solar corona was. Once that was realized, of course, we also have uh, had great advances in our understanding of atomic structures and the noble gases were summarily moved to the right side of the table, arguably their rightful home, due to the fact that we knew that their valence shell configurations were filled, right? They had a closed valence shell of electrons and that places them firmly on the right-hand side of the table. So to sum up, no, there is no element zero. There is no atom lighter than that of hydrogen. However, for several decades in the late 1800s and early 1900s, there was quite a debate going on about whether or not there was an element lighter than hydrogen. Well, that's all for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm Professor Davis from chemsurvival.com, YouTube channel, ChemSurvival. See you next time.